Hi friends, I'm Chuck, and this is my good friend Grant, who's in Washington, D.C. And he and I are gonna start a new series called The IP Equation, Identity in Christ and Our Purpose in Christ, and how those two come together. So, uh, Grant, why don't you read our passage for today, Genesis 1, 27 through 28. Sure. Genesis 1, 27 through 28. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it, and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. All right. So you and I have been talking about identity in Christ for a while now, and this is one of our foundational passages. We start at the beginning. So what are some things that you've learned and gleaned from this passage in Genesis? Yeah, I think the first one uh, right at the beginning is, I was made in the image of God. So he created me uh, in his image. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how, how does that make you feel? What does that do for you? Yeah. Uh, makes me feel really special that God cares enough about me to do that. Um, yeah, makes me feel really uh, empowered as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, special and loved. Those are the first two things the, that make me, that come to mind that make me feel. Yeah. I always uh, like to say that we're the only creation in God's whole creation, created in his image. So that makes us the hottest thing in the universe next to God himself. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty special place to be. And that's our identity, the image of God. So what else sticks out to you? Yeah, I think the other piece... Um... I was created a male, so <laughs> male and female. I uh, I know that I'm created as a male, uh, so mm -hmm. that kind of plays into identity. Mm -hmm. um, I think nowadays that is super important to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And for any of the females watching, they're created as a female. And the we should not only be celebrating our own personal identity, but really celebrating and respecting other people's identity. Uh, it's great that the passage, I, I love how the scriptures does this, male and female, he created in his image. Mm -hmm. uh, if we wouldn't have added that little piece, uh, you know, it might be some chest beating going on and heavy testosterone and out of whack, but uh, right. both male and female are created in the image of God. So, you know, here's a question. Since he created both male and female in his image, what does that say about God? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I think it says, well, I mean, that he, that there are two genders. So he views, he views people as two genders and um, like, you know, go a step further and say of equal value. Mm -hmm. um, those are the two things that come to my mind. Yeah. I, I like to turn this around. Usually we're looking at our identity in this, 
But if we turn it around and say, what is God's identity in this? He must have both the attributes of both male and female. Mm -hmm. And you see this as God is nurturing and caring. And I, I'm not going to call God my mother because it explicitly calls him father okay. in the scriptures. But I, I don't think... Uh, it's it's a problem to say that God has mothering attributes. I think we're very safe to say that. And so mm -hmm. he, he's brought the best of him in two, male yeah. and female. What, what about purpose? You know, we're talking about identity. Maybe you have something else to say about that, but what about purpose? Yeah, I think the this will roll into purpose uh this last piece on my identity but um i am a multiplier mm -hmm. uh and i and not only am i a multiplier i have god's blessing to do that yeah um, so that kind of rolls into the purpose aspect of that is that i was made to multiply mm. so you took the command to multiply and made it your identity. I think that's very important. Yeah. That we get beyond just the obligation or duty of obeying God and make it who we are. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be talking about fishing for men. You know, Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Uh, usually we cut that in half and say, my identity is follower of Christ. My purpose is to fish for men. But you would put it, I am a fisher of men. Yep. And I think that's really important. Let's keep doing that through our series. Any yeah. last words to kind of sum this up? No, I think, I think this gives a... A big, uh, yeah, it's just a big picture of what, how God created us to live in his image that he created us in and to multiply and fill the earth. Um, yeah, and we could go both ways, both in physical offspring and in spiritual offspring. Yeah. So those are aspects of, of my purpose, of our purpose. Yeah. And especially with the new covenant and the, the great commission, we see this kicking in spiritually in a very clear uh, way, how Jesus put it. And I, I think about this, you know, God could have multiplied his image a lot faster than we're doing, you know. Oh, yeah. and, and yet he invites us to be a part of the process of what he's doing on the earth. And yeah. that's a high privilege, you know. It makes it more than just duty or obligation. I get to be a co-laborer with God. Mm -hmm. that, that's pretty significant. Amen. All right. So we'll keep on going with the IP equation, and we'll see you about every other week. But we love you. God bless you. And until next time, keep following Jesus.